Edward, um, got a minute? One. I, I was wondering if maybe you would consider donating to the Bellevue Schools Foundation, you know, for their Spring for Schools fundraising event tomorrow. Please, Mr. Scrooge, it would help me. Who is this? It's Bring Your Child to Work Day. This is my daughter, Tina. Ah. Uh. Doesn't the Bellevue School Foundation already donate to public schools? It does. It's one of the oldest private foundations for public schools in the country. Public education doesn't need any more funding. They get enough from my taxes. Okay, well, if you change your mind, come on, Tina, let's go. Why is he so grouchy? Does he need a hug? <sighs> I love your heart, Tina. Come on. Who are you? I'm the spirit of public education. <sighs> Listen, you're kind of stuck with me for the night, so if I can just have you put your learning cap on, this will all go by a lot quicker and I can get back to binge watching my cooking shows, okay? How did you get into my office? Edward Medovius Scrooge. You are what we call in the spirit world a miser. And I am here to save you before it's too late. Oh, I've been called worse. Before dawn, you will see public education, past, present, and future. And then you must make a choice. I choose not to see. Silence! Raise your hand to be called on before speaking. Get in. That's a toy. Like this. Welcome to my classroom. Now, when you were in school, public education was funded almost exclusively by local tax dollars. But the state put a lid on that funding in the 1970s. Good. So, in 1979, community leaders got together to form the Bellevue Schools Foundation. They saw that public money would fall short of students' actual needs and private funding was necessary in order to fund the demands of the future. Oh, boo. This isn't just about taxes or fundraising, Mr. Scrooge. In fact, it's not really about money at all. It's always been about the high quality programming that leads to the best possible learning outcomes. The Bellevue Schools Foundation funds programs that have been legendary in the community, like the first accessible playground in Washington, Project Discovery Science Kits, Vibes Mentors, National Board Certification for Teachers, college and career readiness software. I mean, they have been helping students thrive for over 40 years. Pretty inspiring, huh? Meh. <laughs> All right, enough history. Let's check out Education Present. Shouldn't that be a DeLorean? Get it? <laughs> Back to the... He didn't move. We're in the present now. How can you tell? Oh, <laughs> if these are your production values, you really do need the money. Today, the Bellevue School District is funded by federal and state funds, levies, bonds, and the Bellevue Schools Foundation. It sounds like they already have enough money. I mean, it is Bellevue after all, super wealthy. Well, each of those funding sources have their limits. I mean, federal and state funds can only go to certain things. Bonds really only fund buildings. Levies fund extras, which most people would consider essentials, like a school nurse or seven period school days. I mean. Each of those funding sources has their purpose. And as for being wealthy, the district's actually pretty diverse socioeconomically. 17% of students qualify for a free or reduced school lunch. Oh, what about PTSAs? I mean, parents raise private funds already. Good question. I love to see the engagement in your learning, Mr. Scrooge. All 29 schools in the district do have a PTSA and they raise funds, but only for their own schools, one at a time. The Bellevue Schools Foundation raises funds for the entire district, all 29 schools at once. <gasps> Would you like to see some of those programs? Uh, no. What if I told you it includes robots? Uh, no. <sighs> well, this story hits pretty close to home, or in your case, work. How so? <gasps> Thanks for asking. Bobby's daughter, Tina, 
She went to preschool in the district four years ago for free. I thought public schools were free. Not preschool. And Bobby couldn't afford it back then before she got the office next to you. I didn't know that. The Bellevue Schools Foundation supports low-income families by providing free preschool tuition. And students that go to preschool have all kinds of benefits later in life, from better health to higher wages. This was an important first step for Tina. Let's have Megan tell us more. My name is Megan James, and I am the Early Learning Curriculum Developer. So we make sure that we are really focusing this year on student well-being. And when I say student well-being, I also mean family well-being. Many of our families come to our programs, and they need more than just a teacher. They need wraparound services. They need help with access to sufficient housing, sufficient health care. So our teachers are specifically trained not just to educate the students while they're in the classroom, but they also work with families to make sure that they have everything they need to have a successful home environment for our students. We do what's called blended funding in our program. So some students might be paid partially through um, special education, so they receive state funds. Then that only funds them for half a day. So the funding we are able to get through outside sources, such as Bellevue Schools Foundation, helps us allow students to attend a full day, where before they were only able to attend half a day. Now, with this additional funding, we can serve students for an entire day, and they can get more education than what two and a half hours could service. So if we weren't receiving the funds from uh, Bellevue Schools Foundation, there would be a large gap in the students that we're missing. We have the families who can afford to pay for private preschool, the families who receive state assistance, then we have all these families in the middle. And as we know, these families are still struggling in our community. So by Bellevue Schools Foundation providing funds so we can have a tuition assistance program in our preschool, it allows more families to access what I think is the best preschool in the area. Thanks, Megan. You're welcome, Spirit. And that's just one of several programs sponsored by the Bellevue Schools Foundation. They also sponsor mental health, computer science, culturally responsive libraries, a BIPOC-oriented mentorship program, and national certification for teachers. And these, these programs are throughout the whole district? Yeah, all 29 schools in the district, depending on grade level. But teachers can also apply for smaller grants that are for just a few schools or one school. And those are the Inspiration and Incubation Grants and the Arts Enrichment and Innovation Grants. This is making my head spin. I know, right? So much philanthropy. See? Reading. That's not funded by my taxes? This isn't just reading. This is the culturally responsive classroom library. What does that mean? Let's ask them. My name is Jennifer Sun, and I teach fourth grade here at Sherwood Forest Elementary School in Bellevue. A culturally responsive library is one where students can see themselves reflected, but they can also peek into the lives of other kids. So definitely a place where you would be able to find reflections of your own identity, whether that's your culture or your language, being part of the LGBTQA plus community, um, all of those things that make students special. I like it because um, it actually has black people in it too, which is like uh, a reflection to me too. I like the library because on the shelf I can see like it's African Americans, uh, Asians and a bunch of other cultures. I'm reading this book called The Undefeated. The Undefeated. It's about how like um, people of color like made a difference in the world. The joy of finding yourself in a book, the joy of seeing yourself represented, the joy of knowing that you are worthy of being in a story is something that every student should be able to experience. I also think kids should know that the world goes beyond what their own family is like. So the joy of finding out about someone else who's similar to you and also different should definitely be part of it. I think one reason why culturally responsive libraries are so important is because every student really deserves to feel like they belong in a community. And when we just look at the publishing industry, even as recently as uh, 2019, I think there were more books published about trucks, animals, than there were where kids of color were centered as main characters. So if we were just to default and buy the easiest books that we could find you know, on the shelf, 
um, we probably would end up with a library that would just perpetuate that lack of representation. So it's really important for us as a district to be very intentional. So one student who particularly connected with a book was a student who noticed one day that a book we were reading was about a biracial kid. And he suddenly said, wait, I think that kid is just like me. I think he's white and black on the inside. So that was really exciting. I don't think he had noticed that kind of representation in a book before. And he was so excited, he didn't raise his hand. He just shouted it out. It was a very joyful moment. I would just like to thank the Bellevue Schools Foundation and everyone who donated generously to make these libraries possible. I think we are seeing a huge impact right now, but I truly believe that that impact will only grow and will be more significant as these kids grow up. That feeling of not belonging or belonging is something you carry with you the rest of your life. And I think the seeds that we're planting right now with these libraries is incredibly important. Thanks, Jen. You're welcome, Spirit. Pretty cool, right? All right, that's enough. Take me back to my office. I mean, technically we never left. Is your dream. More like a nightmare. Come on. <gasps> Let's check out middle school. Definitely a nightmare. Well, if you really want to get back to work, these students can help. My name is Yusra Baid and I'm the STEM curriculum developer in Bellevue School District, uh, supporting secondary. The computer will only do what you tell it to do, right? Be in that productive struggle around what do I need to do in a way to make this robot move, but at the same time, what are some science concepts that I need to keep in mind? Because sometimes when you propose a solution, that proposes or the idea brings out more problems, right? So there's a lot of really complex ideas that they're tackled with and engaging in a productive struggle. And I need to program it in a way that does a specific goal. So that's kind of a computer science. There's also a skill and goal that we want kids to learn to work together to collaboratively to solve a problem. We're hoping that this unit can continue to expound further to have kids, now that you've used this robot to solve this problem, what kind of problems do you envision to want to maybe use this robot to solve? It might not be about the call, that may be local to your community or something that you feel is really important that in the future we're going to maybe need to use robots to do. The most fun is just that little box where it shows you all the like the actions. I think it, it looks cool, it's like my type of design. Once you press play, it will animate what you're, do, what you're doing. I know it looks fun, so I could be doing it someday. We're trying to increase access to um, computer science in general on skills. We've been seeing nationwide trends around, you know, gaps uh, around racial and um, gender just about who's interested and who's doing that work. And um, we see that even you know, within our school district. And we're trying to rewrite this narrative or change students' perception of what does it actually mean to be a computer scientist. So it's pretty, it's like kind of like a little game, but also teaches us at the same time. So I am trying a new one, but I get to draw, and then I think what it's gonna do is gonna do what I just drew on the All thing. Right, I'm not so sure. So let's just try start it. it. Oh. Oh, it's working, very slowly. <laughs> Has this made you more interested in coding? Yes. <laughs> no, it's a lot of fun doing it. I think one of the really important things that made this work possible in this program and just all the great things that you're seeing students do is really our partnership with BSF. Um, I think none of this work would be possible uh, with the amount of you know support that we get from BSF. Uh, we were able to purchase the robots, develop this curriculum and this unit, train our teachers, and support them in taking something that's so different and innovative, and I don't think we would have been able to accomplish that without that partnership, so we really appreciate that partnership. Thanks, Yusra. Thank you, Spirit. I wish we had that when I was in middle school. Where are we going now? To speak with a high school counselor. The Bellevue Schools Foundation sponsors mental health and the Science of Suicide program that has screened thousands of students this year. Hace un año, una persona era no éramos tan cercanas, pero me importaba mucho. 
Esa persona decidió terminar con su vida. No me podía levantar. No podía... No podía ni siquiera entrar a... Prender el teléfono para entrar a clases porque era en línea. Y... Reprobé muchas materias porque no podía. Y la escuela... Fue muy difícil para mí porque... Tenía tanta guerra en mi cabeza. Y mi primera respuesta fue, obviamente, decir, hey, like, I think these are things we should talk about, and um, therapy is really, really helpful, and I know she's had some experience with therapy um, back in Mexico, and she was like, yeah, sometimes that was helpful, so I was like, we do that here, and it's for free, and if you feel comfortable talking with me, like, we can do that here. Um, and she was like, yeah, yeah, you know, I think, I think I need to deal with this, you know, and, and that's where I was like, yes, because I can tell that she really wanted to get out of this dark hole. And she's like, I don't want to live like this. I don't want to think that my life is going to end at like 16 or 17. Like, I want to live past this. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's what I was like, all right, we're going we're gonna to do the work. And she said, I'm going to do the work. And that's, that was kind of my response to her. Gave her a consent form. She brought it back like the next day. She was like, "Here you go." And so I was like, "You're ready. I'm ready. Let's go." Okay. ¿Te acuerdas cuando te estaba tomando tus medidas? Y la primera medida que tomé todo estaba clínico, ¿verdad? Es verdad. Que te querías morir. Y luego creo que hubo la siguiente vez que las tomaste. Y la última pregunta dice: ¿Has pensado en, en no querer morir, en, en yeah, no estar aquí? Está bien. Pero, pero sí, yo creo que para mí, como terapeuta, ese fue el momento que yo vi en ti que, oh my God, que tú, tú realizaste tú mismo el esfuerzo que habías puesto y todo lo que habías hecho, que, que te quedaste en shock. Dijiste, oh my God, Ruth, no me quiero morir. Sí, like, así me dije, dijiste, dijiste, dije no eso. No me quiero morir. Dije eso. <risas> Estaba en automático otra vez. Estaba en automático antes y ahorita Trato de siempre tener los pies bien en la tierra y en los momentos que me siento mal, digo, ok, ahorita me siento mal, me voy a sentir mal. Y está bien, me voy a escuchar, voy a dejar que pase, tengo que sentir esto, tengo que vivirlo porque estoy viva. ¿Te vas a llorar? Yo también voy a llorar. Estoy viva, entonces tiene que pasar. Después de un rato, sé que me voy a sentir mejor. Pasa y otra vez seguimos. Seguimos. Sí, exactamente. Sí, Cuando right. sientes, te das cuenta de que estás vivo. Yeah. Just like when you, you feel, feel all of it, you're alive. Tienes el poder de cambiar personas. Y yo sé que me vas a decir como... Tú no lo haces. Que lo hiciste tú. <risa> que me gustaría decir que a las personas que están pasando por esto, si necesitan ayuda, búsquenla. Porque está bien necesitar ayuda. Y no siempre vamos a poder solos. Muchas veces vamos a necesitar ayuda. Quiero seguir y seguir porque ahora, cuando me preguntan si quiero hacer algo en el futuro, quiero ayudar. Quiero ser una psicóloga, entonces eso es básicamente lo que estoy buscando. Conocerme a mí, conocer la vida, pelear. Thanks, Ruth and Rosie. That program seems really important. I, I mean, they all kind of do. Yeah. Do you see why we need the Bellevue Schools Foundation? Oh, I appreciate the grand tour, I, but I'm not a teacher or a parent, you know, this isn't my business. Not your business? What, what happened? You keep talking about your business. This is your business, or rather, the end of your business. Without great schools providing a great workforce that wants what your employer provides, business dried up. <laughs> Tell me this is a joke. Not this time. Bye, Mr. Scrooge. It gets worse. Do you know what will happen to tiny Tina if the Bellevue Schools Foundation doesn't get the funding it needs to continue its programs? Does she die? Nah, 
Gotcha. But her dreams die. Okay, come on. What? She won't get the computer science education and the mental health assistance she needs. So she'll drop out of high school, <laughs> get a minimum wage job, and, and not have children because she can't afford them. Oh, and not solve the climate crisis and democracy will fail. Actually, yeah. There's a domino effect, Scrooge. And it all comes back to the choices we make for our futures and the futures of people we may never meet. Kids like Tina. So what choice do you want to make, Scrooge? Do you still think this isn't your business? Tina? Tina. Bobby. Edward, what are you still doing here? It's too late to give. Give? To the schools. Bobby, to the schools. It's never too late to give. In fact, we're going to the Bellevue Schools Foundation event today. Would you like to come? I would love to. Yay! You can carpool. Oh, did you know the Bellevue School Foundation <laughs> sponsors computer science? And, and business programs like BizTown wow. oh, and mental health, yeah. which is so important.